And then after a while at Deck West, you were about a Denny's meal away from Microsoft, if I understand. <laughs> All of the software that Microsoft produced that was operating system stuff was pretty pathetic. It was all assembler. It was non-portable. Yeah, I wrote some of that. <laughs> you wrote some of that. So you know some of that, right? Um, did you know Tim Patterson? Uh, no, I did work on DOS, but I mean, I met him, but I didn't know him well. Okay. So. Um, so anyway, you know, I get this call from Microsoft and want to know if I want to come talk to Bill about a job at Microsoft. And I said, oh, sure. So I go over and I talk to Bill. You know, Bill is like, you know, you're immediately, you're going to take a job with us, right? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe, maybe not. Well, why, how, how can you possibly not take a job with us? We're the greatest people in the world. And I'm like, well, you know. So I, you know, listen to the spiel and talk to Bill. And, and the other guys go talk to him, too. One was Rob Short. You may have known Rob Short. Did you mm -hmm. know John Belchunas? No. The other guy was Lon Willoughby. And so they all kind of went over and talked and... and I came back and I, you know, after all this, and I, we talked and I said, hey, I'm not, I, I don't see that this is going to be a great thing. You know, I'm not so impressed with Microsoft. And so I don't know whether I actually told them I wasn't going to accept the job or what, but Steve Bomber calls up and says, how about breakfast at Denny's on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock? I said, sure. So we had breakfast with Steve Bomber at Denny's at 8 o'clock. It's 1 on 148th. It's not there anymore. Uh, right down from Fred Meyers. Yeah, yeah. And he sold us. I mean, I don't know. That could have been Wednesday, and we signed up. I was there next Monday. I mean, it was that quick. So Steve was the, the, the one that really sold us all on going to Microsoft, and that's how we ended up there. And <clears throat> I've been a friend and of Steve's an admirer of him forever. Um, he's a great guy. D Steve fleeced us. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a piece of missing here, and that is the PRISM project. Well, we, hit, we started several projects to produce risk architectures because we had, um, everybody was building risk machines. And the, one of the reasons they're building risk machines was because they're easy to build at that time. You know, I, um, AMD was building these 2901 bit slice chips, and they're four bits wide, and they had all the ALU control and all that stuff, and you just gang them together, and presto, esto, you have a processor, right? And now all you gotta do is design your instruction set and how you're gonna feed this thing. So there were a dozen, at least, risk machines. Risk in general claimed to have a 2x advantage over VAX because VAX was a CISC machine and you had to have all this decoding and it was really it was a byte serial decode. Uh, VAX was overly complicated. For the, for the reason it was overly complicated is because we memory was so expensive when we did VAX that we wanted to encode and PDB11 was so wildly popular. We wanted to be able to encode programs in the same amount of space that we did on the PDB11. So we created this instruction set that did that. Uh, but it was very hard to decode. So we started these, these risk projects in several groups. And we had one at Deck West, and there was one. Um, there were a couple of other ones, or three, I think, in the company. And finally we got to the point where the engineering VPs said, hey, we need just one of these, and we're going to anoint Deck West to be the keepers, the architecture, and that was the PRISM project. So I started to work on the PRISM project a lot like we worked on the VAX architecture where we invited representatives in from various groups that would have to eventually support this thing. You know, the hardware engineers, the software engineers, and whatever. And we produced uh, a couple different versions of the architecture. One was a 32-bit machine, and one was a 64-bit machine. And um, we were progressing along. We were building a new software system called MICA. You might have heard of MICA. Yeah. Um, and MICA was um, wildly ambitious, wildly ambitious. It was at the level of ambition of Multics, maybe. 
I mean, it was, if we'd ever built it, probably nobody would ever bought it, but it had a lot of good ideas in it. And anyway, we worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And then finally, what happened was, you know, it's, it's not moving forward at the speed, I guess, the company wanted. And MIPS kind of jumped up at the, the forefront of the risk processors. And um, the um, VP of, of research was Sam Fuller at DEC. And he was sort of um, in Forest Basket. You ever heard of Forest Basket? No. Forest Basket was one of the principals in SGI. And he actually worked for DEC for a while at a place called WRL, which was Western Research Lab. In fact, they had a risk processor called Titan that they did. Anyway, they were all touting the fact that there were companies that could build these one-chip systems that were faster than fax. And so somebody stood up and gave a presentation that Ken Olson really liked. And the next day, they canceled PRISM. And the day after that, I quit. <laughs> uh, but I didn't leave the company. Uh, I, I, I moved down the street, um, sort of across where Microsoft was down on 520 for a while. Yeah, I remember there were digital buildings down there right yeah. off 520. And I was going to start a company, and I got uh, three of the other guys that I worked on, uh, the Deck West. We were going to start a company, which was going to be a server company, and we... I spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley and talking to the VC people. Uh, we talked to Merrill Pickens. We talked to, um, to um, whoever Don Doerr or John Doerr works for, Oak Investments and a bunch of other ones. And we got money. We had money to start the company and we're all signed up to start the company. And some of the people that had been at Deck West had had left and went to Microsoft. And one of them was working for Nathan Mirvold. And Nathan Mirvold, we probably know Nathan. Mm -hmm. Nathan Mirvold had his, his um, had Bill's ear. And Nathan was very high on the whole risk idea. And uh, actually, that was part of it. The other part of it was that 